Welcome to the Guy, Sharon, and Clint podcast. Shh, there's a moth in here, and it looks extremely angry. G'day, Cobber. It's me, a genuine Australian. Ha! Only fooling. That was me doing my Australian accent, because Guy, Sharon, and Clint are live in Australia. Man, that was a convincing Australian accent. <laughs> it was so good. It was so good. We're ready to do the show. We're coming live from the best place in the world, the QT Sydney. And uh, I am so pumped for this show. Clint just came in before and goes, guys, 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 we need some good acoustics and put down a sheepskin rug. Yeah. That's awesome. Sharon was just looking for a microphone. She was sitting on it. That is not, we're not making this up. That was two minutes ago. And then I pretended to do a fart into it. <laughs> that was a good gag. That was a very, very good gag. You didn't even be a fart joke. It, she was definitely pretending. <laughs> I was pretending. Yeah, she was I'm a, pretending. I'm a silent not and silent and no, violent no, kind of no, girl. No, no, no. Sh- Guy, Sharon, and Clint on the urge. There is a hilarious video that has come out on BuzzFeed today. I'll post it up on the Guy, Sharon, and Clint Facebook page. And it goes through the weird things that all couples fight about. So in there, there is... The everlasting war of the other person eating too loud. I oh god, that grates my gears. If my husband's listening right now, you'd be practicing your silent eating while I'm away. <laughs> also, there's things like uh, what way you put the toilet paper on the toilet paper holder. Okay. Or uh, people not changing the roll when they've finished it. They if, just if, leave it there for the next person to change. Can I just change. say, if, the, if these are problems that you're having, it sounds like you're on the fast uh, track to divorce. Says the guy <laughs> that lives on a two-hour flight away from his girlfriend. Wait until you guys live in the same country, mate. Hey, okay. So these are little <laughs> problems that every uh, relationship happens. Because I reckon if someone is getting angry at me for the way I put the toilet paper on the toilet roll, I wouldn't be in the relationship anymore. I, I think the other way around. I think if that's all you've got to fight about, then you should be pretty happy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good point. These are other Better things. Better than the constant fight about him cheating on you all the time. <laughs> other things in, in the video are like uh, the way you fold the towels because... My husband's a roller. I'm a folder because it fits better in the cupboard. And I totally agree with this in the video. But we want to know, what do you want to add to the list of weird things that all couples fight about? Call us on 0800 The Edge or text us to 3343. we got someone on the phone right now, though. Tegan, what is it in your house? Oh, hi. Oh, me and my boyfriend, we fight about the name of my childhood teddy bear. <laughs> okay. How would he know? <laughs> Obviously, you're the one that knows. Obviously, I called him Buster when I was little, and then we've been going out for about two years, and he thinks that Baxter suits him better, and I think that's just stupid, because I would have called him Baxter if I thought... Exactly. Also, he's got a name. Like. You can't rename it. So how exactly. much How much has this fight escalated? Like, Has it ended up in having to sit in separate rooms, someone's left the house? <laughs> well, it's just like every time he comes around, he'll be like... Hi, Baxter. And I'm like, no, it's not Baxter. It's Buster. <laughs> T- Tegan, oh, Tegan, if you wake up and Buster's severed head is in the bed next to you, you call us ASAP, okay? <laughs> I will, I will. Thank you. <laughs> Say hi to Baxter for us, babes. Bye, Buster. Oh, shut up, no. <laughs> Someone text in, uh, me and the missus have fought about the TV so much it's gone to the point where she recently threatened to cut off my man pouch with a blunt butter knife in my sleep. As a result, I'm watching a lot of Pretty Little Liars. Yeah. Oh, one of the best shows ever. One of the best shows ever. But just, that will enrage you as well because then you'll be just wanting to know who A is all the time. Yeah. Just buy a second TV. No, because then you don't get to talk to each other. At least you're arguing and talking to each other. But if you want to see this video, it's on our Facebook page right now and you will crack up when you watch it. we got Jess on the line though. Jess, what's the weird things that you and your boyfriend fight about? He leaves the toilet seat up constantly. <laughs> See, I'm not too phased on the whole toilet seat thing, but it is really annoying if you've got a partner that misses the bowl all the time and there's like dry wheeze around the top. Oh my god, that's disgusting. Yeah, exactly. I know how you feel. <laughs> exactly. Are you, how close are you looking at the toilet seat? I feel like he goes in there and you come in right after him. No, no, no. Like I, you get your nose right up close there and sniff her. I honestly had a boyfriend that would do that, and it would there'd be like dry yellow stuff on oh, the yeah, toilet okay, all the time. Okay, it was gross. Oh, so you didn't okay. need too descriptive. Uh, <laughs> besides correcting his aim, it sounds like your ex boyfriend needs to drink more water. Definitely, Lucy. What are the weird things that you fight about in your relationship? Yeah, um, how to read a map. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure you can read it the other way, upside down, but 
You can't okay. tell me. I, I also have the same problem um, using my abacus because iPhones have been invented now and you can just use Google Maps. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, know, I knew that you yeah, had GPS, but you still, still need maps sometimes, but God, they can't, they can't work them out. I, I have the same. I have the same problem when I'm using my um, steam engine to fire up the electricity <laughs> generator at my house. This is nasty. <laughs> I'm so Shut sorry. Up. Ignore him, Lucy. Ignore him. Thank you so much for your call. We really appreciate it. <laughs> Guy Sharon and Clint on the edge. Today we got to catch up with Ariana Grande over here in Sydney for our Sydney Super Show. You can hear the full chat of that at 5 p.m. tomorrow because there is so much stuff in there and we'll have an unedited podcast of it as well. Um, but it was really interesting talking to her because there has been a lot of media around her saying that in Australia she's been a real diva and all that sort of stuff. What did you guys think? I was pissing myself going into it. <laughs> No, because seriously, because the way um, she's been portrayed, yeah, um, it was really bizarre situation. But you hear these crazy, crazy, crazy stories come out in the media. One story I had heard that she only was allowed to take photos from her left side, and we got a photo and we filmed on her right side. <laughs> We got her right side of her face, guys. Another story I heard was that she constantly checked every image that was taken of her. She didn't and look at one of the photos we took of her. Another another story I heard that there was like a million questions that she just wouldn't answer and would just flatline you, which has happened to us before. So it was a risky environment to go in. We went in there to a dark hotel room, and she was like a beautiful angel from heaven. She was so lovely, she was charismatic, and she was down to earth as well. It was amazing. She was, and she even when... Well, they, we asked her a question that we it was it was quite a tricky question for Guy to ask, and she wanted to answer the question. So I don't know why people are thinking she doesn't answer things, but this is what she had to say about the backlash that after the Australian media had been calling her a diva. Can, can I just say it's so interesting to meet you in person, and you're so down to earth oh, because it's not in any way that um, media portrays you. And can I say, is it hard to have the media sometimes portray you? Um, I know when you came to Australia, they labelled you as a diva. Is it hard to be like falsely like kind of uh, given an image like that? No. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'll, I can't answer. I'll answer yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it's, sometimes it's it's very unfortunate, like the way that people will like run away with a story and yeah. like completely 180, like what actually happen because yeah. I try to just like keep it real and just yeah. like say hi and mm. yeah. shake mm. hands, answer the questions they want to ask and that's it. But you know, sometimes people don't have anything to give but negativity and mm-hmm. that's really unfortunate. That's why I don't react in a negative way because I don't want to Buy give them it. more of what they already have. Like I feel like those people need like the most love sometimes so I just kind of <laughs> yes. try to I try to just ignore it yeah. because yeah but it, it is it is really unfortunate though sometimes when that can happen especially when my fans can believe it yeah. or when they'll, they'll be like are you okay I am okay like I don't see that stuff I don't look at it I don't yeah. acknowledge it I don't give into it I'm not a victim of it I'm not afraid of it and I'm okay fantastic yeah. And you are, know what? Uh, we've interviewed a lot of uh, pop stars and stuff, like while we've you know been working and things like that. She was one hundred percent the easiest and nicest pop star I've ever interviewed. Can I just say some behind the scenes stuff that you won't see there until you see the video? When that diva question got asked, she had a lot of management around her that sort of sprung into action. They're like, "Got to put the uh, <laughs> got to put put the flames out here. Got to can that question and cut the interview." Yeah, and she so stopped. Tense. She stopped them and she said, "No, no, no, I'll take care of that." And she did. And I thought. It's quite impressive. Yeah, she is amazing. But if you want to hear that full interview, it will be on the show tomorrow, 5 p.m. Set a bloody alarm, guys, because it's very, very interesting. She um, she even said that we were her favourite people from New Zealand. And I was like, so stoked, so stoked. No, no, and, no. and then the next people she met... She goes, you're my favourite people from Australia. So I feel like she's just saying that to everyone. <laughs> and also, she didn't say we were her favourite people. She said we were her favourite weirdos. Yes. Oh, yeah, weirdos. That's pretty good. <laughs> Guy, Sharon and Clint on The Edge. Please welcome to the studio everyone's two favourite novelty wedding contestants is Matt and Travis. Hey, hey Matt Travis. Yeah. Hey, guys, how we doing? Good. Hey, I was watching your Snapchats um, overnight. Oh, okay. Have you have you named your nicknamed your fans? Yeah, we have. Well, we thought um, you know the likes of now that we're up there with the likes of One Direction and and, and, and uh, Justin Bieber. <laughs> the yeah. Directioners. Yeah, the Directioners. Yeah. And what's the other one? 
the uh, beaver, beaver, beaver ball bags. Yeah, the yeah, beaver yeah, ball bags. It, yeah, so we, t- <laughs> <laughs> we thought we'd take a page out of their book and, and name our uh, loyal followers um, mattress protectors. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, <laughs> very good. <laughs> now, we're going to ask you guys, because it's getting very, very close to your wedding day, and an argument that definitely happened in my household, I know it happened in JJ, Mike and Dom, oh, sorry, just JJ and Dom's household for a good 10 years. Is, yeah, not JJ, Mike and Dom's household. No, just JJ and Dom's. They don't Dom's. all live together. I wish they did. Is the last <laughs> name. Oh, yes. Are yes, one so of you going to change your last name to be yes. the same? Touchy Matthew, subject. Matthew has already agreed, actually. No, I have, no, no, no I have not, actually. I've blimmin not <laughs> no, decided have not. on anything. Thanks, <laughs> no. I have not. We, okay. we, okay. <laughs> we're still deciding. Okay, do you guys... Subject. How did you, you win guys, the argument, Sharon? Do you guys have... Uh, oh, yeah, Sharon, how did you win the argument? Um, I kind of caved. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a solution. No, yeah, sure. I um my no my husband. I didn't want to change my name. I for work, but I wanted to change it in personal life, and mm. like JJ had, mm. and um then he was quite upset about it. So I changed my name, and I'm glad I did. It's so much shorter to write on the, my uh, airport cards. Okay. Yeah, well, here's tra- the situation tra- that we have. We've got Travis McIntosh. And Matthew McCormick. Yeah. Is there a way that you could keep the first half of one name and the last half of a second name? Definitely. So, so um, Travis, you could keep um, Mac, and then Matthew, you could keep Cormick, and then it would just be like Matt and Travis McCormick. Isn't, didn't you just say one of their names is McCormick? Yeah, I know. I was trying to trick them. Yeah, I like oh, that. Right. I like that one. Why don't you call, call, call each other... Why don't you call each other the Mix? Yeah, I thought that maybe. Eminem? Oh, M&M? What about yes. um, the two, Mac-Macs. two Big Macs? The two Big Macs. Oh. <laughs> they could work. Well, oh, it sounds That's like not you. That's not a last name, though, is it? You can't <laughs> go to the... I'm not calling myself Matthew Big Macs. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like you guys have got a lot of work to do. Uh, we'll, we'll leave it to... No, we have you... a Big Macs. <laughs> <laughs> Please, go to the registry office right now. <laughs> Trevor's well, yeah, already gone. Big Mac. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you show up to somewhere, it'd be like the Mac attack. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, good luck, guys, and uh, and we all wish you the best for your wedding. We look forward to talking to you, to, to you again and finding out what name you've settled on. All right, guys, all right, thank you very much. much. Guy, Sharon, and Clint. On the edge. Shout out to KFC Gisborne, which has reopened, and there's a queue right around Gisborne waiting to get back in there. I love it. <laughs> it looks, the main street in Gisborne looks like the day that Rhythm and Vine starts, <laughs> but it hasn't. KFC's just opened again. <laughs> Guy, Sharon, and Clint. On the edge. Hi, I love you, and I bought you this sweet treadmill. I hate you, and I'm leaving you. What am I doing wrong? Shares Dogs Love Shack. Love. Ow! Let's get every and any love questions to Shares Dog. Shares Dog, one from the text machine. Mm-hmm. Is Tinder a legitimate way to meet people, or is it just for people who are DTF? Do you know what? I obviously don't use Tinder, but we did a poll on our Facebook page about a month ago, which was answered by, I think, around about 190 listeners of this show, and it was 80% thought that it was really good for dating, but it is, obviously, if you want to get a hookup on it, it's good, but 80% of them had used it for dating and being successful. I know of two people that um, used to be tragically single that are now engaged to people they met on Tinder. Is one of them Chang? No. But didn't he meet his girlfriend on Tinder? I feel like he did. I'm not sure. But no, it is for dating. It's just I think it's just easier to, for you to weed out the people that are just looking for some action. That um, real tragic passing of that uh, girl recently who met on Tinder, that was quite off-putting for me. I'm like, there's a good chance you'll run into a weirdo, am oh, I right? The one who got thrown off the balcony the one in off the, the Gold balcony, Coast. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, the reason I bring that out is because they met on Tinder. That's what I was throwing out there. But I think that also... That is a horrible thing that happened, but that's the risk you take on any date that you go on. You yeah, could meet point. a guy face to face and take him home, and he could, and something could go wrong that's as well. It's just when you're online dating and you go meet them for the first time, take someone to sit in the corner and make sure you're all good and give them a sign if you're sweet. You know, like yeah. don't have your first date somewhere where it's just the two of you. Yeah, we've got to go to the phones right now. Ed, hello. What's your question? Hello. 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 Alex. Alex. Oh, no, Alex. Oh, oh hi, Alex. Alex. What's your question? Um, I was just wondering, like, how soon is too soon to take it to the next level, and how do you ask it and bring it up? 
I think it's one of those things. There's, I don't, th- don't think you can put a time limit on it. It's always when actually it's, you've got to kind of see when both of you guys are ready. If you get the vibe that she's ready and you're ready, then good times. But uh, like if you've been together and you're like thinking about like taking to the next level, then you should be able to talk to her about that. Also, as well. it depends on what the next level is. If the next level is just sex, then ask. If the next level is sex and dinosaur onesies, then um, gauge the atmosphere. <laughs> Feel the vibes. If you're doing dino- stuff in dinosaur onesies, <laughs> then I am weird. so weirded out because your room oh, is above we're me. We're all weirded out. Hi, I love you, and I bought you this sweet treadmill. I hate you, and I'm leaving you. What am I doing wrong? Shares Dogs Love Shack. Love. Ooh. Question from the text machine. Shares Dog. Lately, I've been noticing that my boyfriend has been acting quite girly. The other day, I saw him walking through town holding hands with a man. What should I do? <laughs> wow. That's not funny. That poor girl. Like, were they holding hands romantically? I think she's taking the piss. I think maybe if she did actually see them holding hands, she does need to talk to them about it because maybe she's bearding him without even realising it. What's bearding? Bearding is like... Um, when you have someone that's your girlfriend, but secretly you're actually gay. Oh, like a cover-up Yeah, girlfriend. like a cover-up. So there's quite a few Hollywood celebrities that, that have beards that oh, haven't come out yet. Oh, spell the dirt. No, I will not. I, I know. Know you've got to, Sharon, you've got no, to. No, like people have always said it about Hugh Jackman. Oh. But I don't think that is true. Um, that people have said it about James Franco. Oh. And a whole lot of, a lot of different Say names. the real one that you, want to, you don't want to say because you don't want to upset the One Direction fans. No, I don't even know what you're talking about. Say it, Clint. No, I, I anyway. Go, I just want to do another. Ooh. Anyway, if you've got a question <laughs> for the Love Shack, call us at 0800 The Edge or text us to 3343. Hey, Todd, what's your question? Uh, what's the best pickup line? Oh, good. I don't really like pickup lines. I think if you're going to use a pickup line, you use it in a joking form so they know that you're not actually serious about using that crappy line. So if you go, that's the only time a pickup line has worked on me. If someone's used it in a joke form, and then it's actually quite good because then people... Great icebreaker, right? Yeah, yeah, people think that you're funny. Todd, my best one is uh, one that I used on Megan Fox just two days ago on the green carpet. And the question, the pickup line is, kiss, kill, marry, me, Saddam Hussein, me again. It gives them a very limited option of basically just you, and they're forced to be in a relationship with you. It's genius. The downside is, though, if they choose to dub Hussein over you, (laughs) could backfire. And also, um, how successful was that? Did you ever see Megan Fox again? No, but she said she's going to kiss and marry me. Oh, that's pretty cute. That's pretty cute. A a verbal contract is legally binding. (laughs) So I think if you're going to, as I was saying, if you're going to use it, make it a joke and just be yourself. Okay. Don't open with, well, that's an ugly dress, because that never goes down well either. No, I, I, don't, I can't imagine that would. <laughs> <laughs> Quick fire one for you, Shaz Dog, to wrap things up. I'm 22 and a good catch, but haven't been kissed, let alone had a relationship. Wow. Should I be worried? I don't think you should be worried. You've got plenty of time to meet someone. To have fun being 22 like Taylor Swift does. And I don't know about you. When you meet someone that's worth meeting and worth pashing up, then you will. There you go. Just Th- stop putting so much pressure on yourself. Thank you for all your questions in the Love Shack today. Guy Sharon and Clint on the bloody edge. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us in our creepy hotel room in Sydney, <laughs> star of Home and Away, you might know her as Denny, it's Jessica Gray Smith! <laughs> Well, guys, that's awesome. Well, well, thank you so much for uh, coming into our hotel room. We did try to clean it up for you a little bit, so I hope it's it all right. Good. It's not too bad. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Well, it's so great that you're here. I'm a like, massive uh, soap <laughs> opera uh, nerd, and so you're going to get weird questions from me. I have a really um, hard time separating the show from reality. <laughs> to, to all the, um, to all the uh, uh, listeners who have just joined us, Sharon <laughs> Off-Air has been questioning <laughs> Jessica about whether people who are in relationships in the show are in re- relationships in real life. No, because honestly, if anyone's watched it, they would know that they're, they're br- br- and, oh, crap, now I've forgotten her name, so I'm really nervous. Jessica, are you, are you used to punishers like Sharon? Is it normal? Um, Yeah, it is normal, what? actually. <laughs> You're just calling me a punisher? Come on. No, we get all the time. We get asked all the time, like, are you guys in a relationship in real life? And then in the beginning, they're always like, oh, no, you know, obviously they act. And then halfway through, they kind of go, it looks really real. Is, I think it must be because is it because you the more that you have to, like, patch someone up at work, the easier it gets as well? Yeah, definitely. Like, the more comfortable you get, I guess. It's- oh, it depends. Like, it depends if you start hating them, then it's like, 
harder, but like most of the time. Has it ever happened to you where you've had, where you've had someone you're dating on the show that you just cannot stand? No, it hasn't happened to me yet. Yet. Uh, yet. <laughs> yet. It's a testament to your great acting that uh, that Shaz Dog believes it's so real. Can I just give you a huge compliment? You've got the best teeth I've ever seen in my life. Oh, thank Is you. Is that a prerequisite oh, wow, yeah. to acting? <laughs> um, I'm going to go with, yeah. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Interesting teeth are better, I think. But, um, yeah, thanks. I, I didn't realise this before you got here, but you're actually a Kiwi. Is that right? Yes. Where, are you, where are you from? I'm Danny Burke. Oh, oh, no way. Oh. Danny Burke to Summer Bay. Do um, people make fun of you because of your accent? Yes, all the time. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes, they do. My name is Jess, so it's like just even more. <laughs> Aww. I, and I, I, was it like, because I imagine if I was a New Zealand girl from Danny Burke and then all of a sudden I was on Home and Away, which is like one of the biggest shows in New Zealand, that'd be a pretty big pinnacle. Like you've clocked New Zealand actors that are settling with Shorten Street and you're killing it on Home and Away. That's how I think about it. I mean, no. <laughs> I would. I've got home and away now. Time to give up. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, it's good. It's really cool. I mean, it's cool to be on a show that um, my friends can watch in New Zealand. Mum and dad can watch. And it's kind of like family enough that, you know, my grandparents can watch it too. Are you, are you, when you go to Danny Verk, are you the cool kid in Danny Verk? Because you know, know all the spoilers and stuff like that? <laughs> um, I don't go back to Danny Verk. But- <laughs> No, mum and dad moved, so they live in Paravaromu now. So, oh, also um, a bright lights, big city. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've literally forgotten your roots. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> no, I like the honest about I it. I haven't been back to New- um, Dannybrook for about. I we um, we should organise a trip for you home to Paravaromu, and we could have a um, homecoming party on the McDonald's. That's also a train. <laughs> yes, that would be awesome. I know exactly what you're talking oh, about. Oh, I love that McDonald's. <laughs> that's really good McDonald's, actually. Now on the show, who is your favourite person in the entire cast? To work with. To honestly. work with. Oh, whoa, that's really hard. Because I, what I love about it is you see Marilyn and then you see Marilyn not on Home and Away and that she is an absolute <laughs> completely. babe, completely different. Oh, yeah, she's completely different. I mean, I don't know. I love working with like, I love working with Cassie and Ty and Bonnie is awesome. If you thought that was a hard question, who was your least favourite person to work with? <laughs> <laughs> least favourite person. Uh, you don't have to answer it if you don't you want can, to. No, you totally. You can. The pe- no, you, <laughs> you can say because they won't hear it because oh, it's going to be broadcasting in no, New Zealand. I can't say for real. <laughs> You've already paid out um, Danny Verk enough. Um, Jessica, Sorry, we Burke. love watching you on Home and Away. We're a huge fan. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Jessica Grace Smith. Guys, Sharon and Clint. We're live from Sydney and it's time to fire the cash cannon. Which is game show? Los numero uno. Well, Giants, this is close monetary reward. The cash cannon. El cash cannon. All over your face. Hello, guys. <laughs> Hello, Chad. Sorry, Chad, we don't know what just happened oh, then. Okay, okay the, the band just played and then, uh, you know, this is the final week of the Ash Cash Can. I'm going to miss doing this. You're oh. going to miss You're shooting gonna... massive cannons of cash. Well, we're not surprised by that, Chang. <laughs> Chang, you can do it in your own free time, but you have to use your own money. Yeah, You're a very I, tight man. Which I don't have. We have Tom from Hamilton who's going to be playing today. Hey! Hello, Tom. What's up? Not a match, not a match. How's, now, you... how's Buddy Hamilton going, mate? Uh, cloudy, so... Good, yeah, good. <laughs> always good in Hamilton, always good. Uh, we, you've got to choose between Guy, myself, or Clint for the Edge Cash Cannon, and we will shoot the one, shoot them of the one you choose, and you'll win the cash from that cannon. So, who are you choosing, myself, Clint, or Guy? Uh, I'm going to go Clint. Yes, I've been good on the choice. shelf for so long. Good choice. I felt like I was the jilted bride who was never going to get a husband. Um, but Chang, when you're ready, pump up my gun and fire it off. All right, here we go. The Gage Cash Cannon in three, two, one. Ooh. Whoa, that was a good one. Money, money, money everywhere. Yeah, how much we got, Chang Alang? Tom, you have won $300. Hey! Oh. Tom, that's pretty good, but go with me on this. We're about to ha- uh, make things a little bit more dramatic. Yeah. You have the choice, as we've been doing all week, to go double or nothing. So we can make this 600 bucks, or you could walk away with 300 or it could turn into nothing. It's your choice. First of all, would you like to double or nothing? Come on, Tom. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yes, let's, let's do, do it. it, Tom. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Guy is the, um, the, the flipper or the tosser on the show, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> Tom... 
Tom, I am going to flip a cordless phone. Do you want numbers side up or non-numbers side up? This is for double or nothing. Uh, let's go non-numbers. Non-numbers side up. Non-numbers, okay. here we go. Here's the flip. It's non-numbers side up. Congratulations. <laughs> Ripper. <laughs> So your $300 has now turned into $600, Tom. Congratulations. It's awesome. Thanks so much, guys. No worries. And hey, thanks for choosing Clint because, man, he's been a whinging bitch for the last two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> your next chance to fire a cannon at 7.45 with JJ, Mike and Dom tomorrow morning. Guy, Sharon and Clint on the edge. We are knocking on the door of an election. This is actually, I really get off on this. Sharon's whoa, looking at her whoa, phone. Whoa, She's whoa. not into this at all. I genuinely find I the am. election... I am. I'm just a multitasker. I can do two things at once. I find the election so exciting. Like, I find I, it the worst election ever. It's just, it just looks like a whole lot of primary schoolers bitching at each other. Yeah, okay. Some people say that way. I enjoy that. Though. I, th- I see it like as being like a sport. Like it's like almost like a big sports game between yeah. two massive teams. And uh, what I like about it is we're getting to the point now where it's actually on a knife edge. Every vote is very important. And uh, most importantly, we're getting to the point where parties might do something stupid. They might throw out like a like a like a little something that grabs you in. I, I my first time I got to vote, it was two thousand and uh, was it two thousand six? I think sure two thousand five. When yeah. Helen Clark pulled out the goodie bag for all students, and it was interest free student loans, and that was a bombshell. It swung the election in her favour. Yeah. Oh eight hundred the edge or t- text in the three three four three. What are things that would swing the election? And change your vote straight away right now. Susie, what would it be for you? Just saying, I get so frustrated with pedestrians who cross when they read man showing and hold up the traffic. <laughs> my reason to start of finding those idiots. Okay. To stop them from doing it, I'd, I'd probably... I'd send, probably send them to jail, Susie? Would you send them to jail? <laughs> no, 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 not that serious. What about the death sentence? Do you know what? I, I would jump on that bag wagon with you, Susie, and also chuck in, because there is a law in New Zealand, you get a $70 fine if you're on your bike without a helmet, and I think they need to reinforce that again, because there's too many people not wearing helmets. <laughs> that's it's a, bad for you. That's a good point. Susie, I've got a bad mission to make. I'm one of those idiots who crosses the road at, at oh, any time. It's because I'm a pedestrian. Lucky. I'm not on the road when you're walking, then. <laughs> Here's my theory. Because <laughs> you'd run him over. I've <laughs> been <laughs> <laughs> my theory, no, my theory I'm is joking. this: the cars don't want to hit you. No, me too. They will swerve around you. They've got more to lose than you do. You can cross at any time. They don't want my death on their hands. I don't think. You I've got what one. Annoys me the most though. It's would they like it if we started driving on the footpath? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good, good point, call, Susie. Good it's call. a good point. Thank you so much for calling, Tina. What would yours be? It's been a branded Nutella free. <laughs> that, that Nutella was free for all You would vote for John Key if he said that I literally would I feel like that's a policy that Kim.com could bring to the table Oh <laughs> my, my, my problem with this Is that don't you feel like we'd just go Overboard on Nutella And as a result the dental bills would go Through the roof Yeah but then in four <laughs> years when everyone's sick of Nutella Then the new policy can be like Forget Nutella, free jam for everyone <laughs> <laughs> We're the spreads party. <laughs> I like it. Thanks, Maddie. We love it. It's okay. Thanks, and baby. So- <laughs> and sorry for calling you Tina as well. Finally, on the phone, though, we've got Ruth. What would yours be? I would have, like, um, having a public holiday once a month. Oh, yes, absolutely. At least one three-day weekend per month. I would like Definitely. a three-day weekend every week. There's actually, every there, week. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. No, no, no. I was reading a, an, an Economist article in that brainy Stop magazine. Stop bragging about your braininess, I was, I was reading an Economist <laughs> okay, article. Okay. All I do is read Lister and Economist. Hey, <laughs> hey, guys, look at the glasses and respect them, okay? Respect the glasses. <laughs> yeah, good work, it was mate. arguing. It was arguing that people are much more productive if they have a three-day weekend and all that, t- think about the amount of time we waste at work on Facebook and stuff like that. Mm. Okay, if we had a four-day week, we would work harder and more efficiently. We would pay more tax and actually make a more... You're in- boring okay. me! <laughs> okay, I was just trying to have a real point for once. He's supporting your three-day weekend and you're still not interested in it. Yeah, well, support it with a one seat. <laughs> Tonight at 8.40 on TV3, I'm so into it, I'm probably going to have to stream it via the interwebs. <laughs> There is the final leaders debate between John Key and David Cunliffe. They're both desperate. (laughs) They're desperate for your vote. 
What is one bombshell that they could just bust out during the debate that would swing your vote? I already know what mine is. What? Put their All Blacks on free-to-air no. television. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, that's good. Buy the All Blacks back off Sky. Uh, and because the New Zealand's team and New Zealand owns the All Blacks and make it free to wear so everyone can watch them. Do, do what they do here in Aussie though. In Aussie, they legally bind companies like Sky to air it free to air. Wow. So you have to play, um, they have league, they have cycling, the Australian Open, everything free to air so everyone can enjoy it. There you it. go. Someone sort that out that's and I'll, vote, I'll vote for you. That's quite clever from you, Clint. I didn't expect that from you. When you started with All Blacks, it's like, oh no, here we go. It's going to be <laughs> make, uh, make Richie McCall your Minister of Finance. <laughs> <laughs> could, oh, that, I don't even think about that. Maybe we could have um, compulsory Richie McCaw visits to workplaces. <laughs> that would be down with that. I'd, probably, I'd have so many jobs. It would probably kill him. <laughs> hey, the big, a big one that's come through the text machine, so I feel like I have to bring it up, bring it up but it's very controversial. People are texting in saying legalising marijuana. Oh, that, oh that's, been yeah. a, that's been a policy for years, it should, though. It's starting to happen in the States, and it would swing a lot of people. <laughs> and I personally have uh, have nothing to do with drugs, but I'm going to throw it out there right now. It's a great source of tax revenue for the government if you legalise it, because right now the money goes all to gangs and to illegal sources. The, the what if the money went to the government? The funny bit is... Um, all the people who, te- and I don't mean to stereotype here, everyone who texted in um, legalise weed didn't bother answering their phone when we <laughs> rang them back. <laughs> we're going to hit the phones now, if that's okay with you, John Campbell. Um, we're going to go to Brad, uh, sorry, to Jess. Jess, what would you want to have announced? Um, legalise right hand turns, uh, left hand turns on green lights. Oh, that, that, that's, uh, that's what they do in the States. Very confusing if you don't yeah. know your left and rights. Yes, okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. So you're saying? I was a little bit confused. So you're saying this would swing your vote? It's, you're that passionate about it? Well, I haven't registered yet, which I probably should do, but I definitely be down for that. Hey, little tip, it. little tip. You don't have to register. Just show up on the day and cast a special vote. Just say your name and bring your ID. Really? Oh, yeah, okay. it's that I'll easy. That. <laughs> Good on there. you, Jess. Luke, what would yours be? Um, I think they should just make all footpaths downhill. <laughs> oh. Amen. Great that is a idea. great suggestion, or Luke. O- outdoor travelators. True, true, true. <laughs> Tasha on 0800 The Edge, what would yours be? I really want them to bring back the chicken tenders at Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> yes. oh, can I please jump on this, Tasha, and also throw in that they cut the BK chicken in half again because that is a complicated yes. burger to eat. <laughs> They cut the paper, but they don't cut the burger. It's so weird. <laughs> they need to do it. Cut in half. You're like, what's I feel like um, issues to do with Burger King are an issue for the monarchy, not for the government. Though. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, Thank you, you go so much to the king. Oh, that was pretty good. I liked that. Thank you. I, did, I only got it halfway through, but I enjoyed it. So and it- finally, Brad, what's yours? Uh, daily Eminem concerts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Daily. Don't you think you get sick of Eminem though? If you had, a, if you had to watch his concert every day. Nah, I never get sick of him. I got every single album of his. No word for word. So, so basically, <laughs> this the man. Basically, Brad, you just want to live the life of the Lego Movie, but instead of everything being awesome, you want to just have Stan every day. Yeah, man, that's correct. <laughs> um, Brad, effort, bro. Brad, what does the phrase "too much of a good thing" mean to you? He hung up. <laughs> <laughs> he dropped the mic and walked off. <laughs> No matter what your vote is, this September 20th, get out and vote. It's really easy to do. You don't have to be enrolled. Just show up and cast a special vote. Good luck to everyone. Vote for whatever stupid reason you want to. I'm just calling the bellboy, getting rid of your soapbox, and we'll be back to the show next. Guy <laughs> Sharon and Clint. Sharon hates it when Guy talks about politics. Oh, go on for ages. Just go hang out with Cumler. Guy, Sharon, and Clint. On the edge. One of the uh, things about Sydney is that we've been noticing some weird people uh, out and about around the streets, and we thought we would take, to, we would send Clint to the streets and ask them about our new "Love You Man" promotion because we thought that might might be something that gets an interesting reaction. Yeah, just to see. I mean, New Zealand is a rugby mad country. Yeah, New Zealanders are batty about rugby. Australia, they're not so much. They sort of spread their love between league, Aussie rules, cricket, and rugby may actually come in a distant fourth, to be honest. Is that because they've just given up trying to beat us? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. This, this Friday, 
uh, Travis and Matt are getting married. They're going to be getting married on JJ, Mike and Dom's show in the morning. They'll be getting married to win a trip to the biggest rugby competition on earth next year. We legally can't say the name. We sent Clint out onto the streets to talk to your average Sydney cider and ask them what they thought about this uh, proposal. Would you marry your best friend to win a trip to the rugby Yeah, f*** off. You would? Yeah. Oh, good news. I'm already married. Uh, say, say we could arrange a convenient way for you to divorce her. <laughs> no, you're all right, mate. Not keen? No, no, no. Excuse me, sir, can I ask you a quick question? Probably my mate Herb. But this is your mate here? This yeah, is actually yeah. good, actually. Would you marry your best friend to win a free trip to the rugby Probably not. Is this your best friend here? <laughs> yeah. That's awkward. He wouldn't marry. Would you, would you marry him for the trip? Uh, no. No, well, at least it's mutual, I guess. First of all, what are you doing today? What's your job? I don't know. I'm riding a pussy. <laughs> Question for you. Would you marry a man for a trip to the rugby No. No? no. English. You're English? It's in England. You could go home. Don't like rugby, mate. You don't like rugby? You don't like England? No. Nah. All right. Do you guys watch rugby? Yes. Which team do you support? Wallabies. Wallabies? Yeah, of course. Would you marry your best friend to win a trip to the yeah, of course. And it has to be a woman best friend? Yeah. Female? Male? No. No? No. No, I'll find some other way to get there. I'd swim. I'd <laughs> swim, I'd take my chance to swim, but I wouldn't marry the male. <laughs> that last guy, very, very adamant that he was never going to marry a man. <laughs> I always find like those are like the fruitiest ones, though, eh? <laughs> Those are the dudes who, like, in behind closed doors, would be getting up to some nasty stuff. Put it this way. That guy was wearing a high-vis vest, um, and he wasn't doing any roadworks. (laughs) Okay, okay. So that was a resounding, a definite no. Like, there's definite the Australians would not do that. It was largely no. There were a couple of yeses, but uh, overwhelmingly it was a no. Interesting research. I wonder if they'd say the same thing if it was a chance to go to um, the World Didgeridoo Championship. (laughs) (laughs) They'd be right into that. (laughs) Guy, Sharon, and Clint. Itch. Wherever you're sitting right now, don't get too excited, okay? But we have got some huge news. Big news. On a scale of one to huge, how huge is the news? Huge. Double huge. On a scale of double huge to quadruple huge, how huge is it? (laughs) This is a quadruple huge, Shazog. This is big time news. Guy, Sharon, and Clint have developed a new groundbreaking Groundbreaking, concept. Groundbreaking. Mm -hmm. We are building up... To play on Friday, Darude Sandstorm. Oh my god. This is a song playing right now. Perhaps the greatest song ever written. Perhaps the most important song of a generation. We, we had to cut it off uh, briefly because we don't want to play it too early. It's we like, can't release it. It's like Darude, when he made Sandstorm, got bored in the bathroom because in those days you couldn't play with your phone while you're in the bathroom. And then he just started thinking to himself, then he wrote it down and made a smash hit because lots of pop stars come up with their songs in the toilet. Let me hit you with some facts. It came out in the year 1999. What a year. Oh. Great year. Darude, real name, Ver- Sandstorm. Ville oh. Vertanten, yeah. uh, is from Finland. Before that, largely unknown. After that, musical genius. <laughs> He's up there with Beethoven. This is a man who crafted a song that can create a dance party in any situation. You bust this song out and your party is going to be jumping. So everyone, lock down in your calendars for Friday, 5 p.m. on the Guy, Sharon and Clint show. We're going to be playing Sandstorm. Right now we're starting the hashtag Countdown to Sandstorm. Countdown Woo! number two, Sandstorm. Sandstorm, believe it or not actually, is a song that they had to stop playing at the sevens because it was making people go too buck wild. <laughs> And they had to take it off the playlist. I went to a party once, and it was already jumping, and then this one played Darude Sandstorm, and it got to such a dangerous level that the police had to come and shut down the party. Yeah. I like that you guys have gone retro with Sandstorm, and you've also gone retro with sayings that no one says anymore, like the party is jumping and everybody getting buck wild. This is what happens when Darude Sandstorm comes out. People do crazy-ass shit. Now, we've put our name to it, we've committed to it, so we have to do it. And you know what? We will do it. This Friday at 5 o'clock, we will play Darude Sandstorm from start to finish. People say it can't be done. It's going to be done on Friday. Um, Do you think after we've done this, we could do a countdown to Islands in the Stream and play that for the first time ever on the edge? Because I've been really trying for that for a long time. Never. Guy Sharon and Clint's Edge.
bitch. <laughs> I've got a really weird injury. And if you've got one, call us at 0800 The Edge or text us to 3343. Leandu, who was our winner that uh, came over to meet Ariana Grande with us today, her and I yesterday went and got massages at the mall. Oh, and they you. were it was a really good massage. But then at the end, the, the little lady... Hey, they're, her, called, they're called uh, no, Chinese she, people. You she don't call was a lady, but she was really little. Yeah. She put her hands on like my butt, and I was like, what is she doing? And then and she just kind of leant in, and I was like, what is she doing? And then she climbed up on me. <laughs> just climbed up your butt. <laughs> so she was straddling me while I was lying on my stomach. <laughs> and then she put her knees on my butt. And so she was kneeling on my bum, and then she was leaning over, like, manipulating my back, kind of, and clicking my back, which was amazing at the time. And then she, like, did this, like, thing on my back, and then she was really, like, putting all her weight into her knees. And then she moved back, and, like, so her knees were, like, at the bottom of my bum. And then she started doing it again, and she grabbed my arms, pulled them back, and then was pulling me to stretch me up. Yeah. Felt amazing at the time. I was like, what a strong woman with such little hands. And then she, today I got out of bed. I can barely walk and I like was like holding onto my hips. I was walking because my hip is just in horrendous pain. My hip is like popping out and then popping back in again. And it's like doing this really weird click. I think that I'm, I think she stuffed my hip. Shaz dog has been having a whine all day about her, her hip that reckons is going to cause her like arthritis and stuff when she's older. It is honestly the most painful pain I've ever experienced. She's complaining about this because she went to the mall and got a massage and got ridden by a tiny little Asian lady. <laughs> got ridden by an Asian woman. 0800 The Edge or text in the 3343. What is your weirdest injury? I'd also like to point out that neither of you gave me any sympathy and I have been walking <laughs> around all day having to go and get guests oh, in the lobby. Oh, shut up and go and have a cry. Oh, you guys suck. <laughs> Let's go you. to the phones. All right, fine. We'll find out what other people's injuries <laughs> I'll be you have sympathy for them. Luke, what's your weird injury? I was having a bit of I was getting ready to go out for dinner and putting on my jeans and I got the old fellow caught in my zipper. Oh <laughs> it's got, that always has freaked me out on behalf of men ever since something about Mary yeah. when that when he gets his, his frank and beans stuck in his zip. How long how did you get it out? I was in a world of pain, I tell you that. I had to go down to the emergency room and Oh, I ended up with a few stitches. Oh! Okay. oh. Horrific. We're that so sorry to hear that, actually bro. is really, really intense. We're going to hook you up with our must-have DVD this week, which is called Bad Neighbours, okay? Oh, thanks for that. No worries. And by winning it, you could also score the ultimate frat house toga party kit valued at $1,000. It's got everything you need, pizza vouchers, recaps of beer pong, everything now. So register online at edge.co.nz if you want to win that as well. Check some Mondays on, bro. He'll probably get his um, wanger stuck in the DVD case. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas, what's yours? All right, you know uh, the leaf springs on cars? Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, you imagine a truck one is slightly bigger. Yeah. I was used to work for a courier company, and I went to pick one up, and I was using my hips to push it off onto the deck, and it slipped out of my hands and squashed my old fella on the deck. Oh. oh! You crushed your penis. Christmas Eve, so you can imagine <laughs> I didn't get any nookie for Christmas or for New Year's because it put me in hospital till the day before New Year's. Do you know what? This happened s- similar. Like, this is actually quite often that, that, that things happen to boys down there. I know this guy, Ryan, who was going to the bathroom and then he leaned out the window like as a gag because it was one of those like wooden windows that you slide up. Yeah. And he leaned out to be like, ha 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 to his friends and the window was like whang, bang, <laughs> landed on his come thing. On. And at the time, because he had to get so many stitches in it, his girlfriend couldn't come around in case he got excited because then oh. the, the stitches would break. <laughs> Honestly, it's a brutal Brutal, brutal. So thank you so much for your story. I'm going to wear box everywhere from now on. (laughs) Don't worry, mate. There's no way you're getting yours caught anywhere. Aaron, what's your story? Um, Well, I was getting ready to compete in the National Athletics Competition. Uh, Yeah. I was doing quite good about my performance. And uh, as I was taking my T-shirt off to strip down to my singlet, I managed to dislocate my shoulder. (laughs) Gee, ow! Was it easy to pop back in or did you have to go to the hospital to get it put back in? 
Um, sadly, it was about the third time, so it went back in quite easy. Oh, oh that is the lamest way thing. to have an injury Take me I've ever heard of. You've got quite a thick... It wasn't thick... even throwing the winning throw. <laughs> you, you, you've, got, you've got a quite a thick-sounding Scottish accent, am I right? Well done, yes. Were you entering the caber toss competitions at Scottish Highland Games? No, it wasn't, but I was throwing a hammer, which is a Scottish event. Oh, awesome. Wow, that's awesome. Shame well, you couldn't get there because you injured yourself while taking off a T-shirt. That is an amazing <laughs> novelty injury. Some other great ones from the text machine. Someone texted in to say, my sober driver ran me over. <laughs> oh, another good one. I was pashing someone. I sneezed mid-pash and headbutted the girl and broke my nose. Oh, wow. It doesn't get any worse than that. It's going so well, you're pashing a chick, and then all of a sudden you've had the worst injury in the history of all time. <laughs> Guy Sharon and Clint on the edge. What it's the, the Sydney Snack Report. The Sydney Snack Report. It's the Sydney Snack Report with Guy. The Sydney Stack Report. Okay, can you just sing the song again and say snack, not stack and smack? Because <laughs> Sydney... oh, now I'm really confused. Is it about snacks? Is it about smack as in crack? <laughs> and then it's about, like, what is it about? It's the Sydney Snack Report with Guy. We're checking out all the hottest <laughs> snacks on the Sydney snacking scene. Okay. Guys, I've been sampling all the delicacies. And can I just say, the hottest spot for snacks in Sydney at the moment is the City Stop Dairy, um, just outside a hotel on Pitt Street, just past the Westfield Mall. There's, it's the place where you bought those $14 ridiculously overpriced batteries, Clint. Yeah, it cost me fourteen ninety five for one battery. Let's just start right here, guys. Australia has every flavour of Hubba Bubba in the world, including uh, watermelon, Dr. Pepper, what? and one that's flavoured like root beer. It's disgusting, wow. but it's still amazing. Wow. I'm quite impressed by the snacks here. Going to throw it out there quite, quite early, guys. The Pringles here are amazing. Oh, Australian Pringles, two diet. Oh, and if you're going to go chips, then you've got to have Lay's. They're Lay's. Lay's potato chips. They're really good. Absolute classic, Sharon. I can't believe we've gone this far in the Sydney Snack Report without talking about caramel koalas. Well, I haven't seen any caramel koalas yet. You haven't even caught one. I haven't caught one yet. Well, oh, what's crikey, natu- mate. What's the natural habitat for a caramel koala? Airport. <laughs> <laughs> they hang out at the airport, do they? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to throw... And they're s- over in the um, gum trees. Hey... So my most pa- pa- all the kangaroo koalas have been eaten by the double chocolate dingoes. <laughs> <laughs> so I had my most patriotic moment in New Zealand uh, uh, recently. Was okay. it when you wore that Japanese shirt everywhere? No, 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 no. And it wasn't where I wore my um, fourteen dollar uh, big Australia shirt either. It was when I went to the Woolworths here and noticed how terrible Australian apples are. Oh. They have import restric- restrictions on New Zealand apples, and I can see why. Our apples. Kick Australian ass! Wow, what's I so bought, different about them? I bought, they're just poor quality. They're um, they're not as uh, they, crisp. They're not as red. They're are they not powdery? as flavoursome. Yeah, they're just bad. Um, they Australians bad. are very defensive of their apples too in their apple industry. They suck at them. They grow them out there in the desert next to some dying kangaroo. Terrible. New Zealand kicks their ass when it comes to apples. Here's where we don't kick our ass though in naming chocolatey treats. Get this, they're like they're big. Instead of having tip top over there, they have Peters. Yeah, um, we have a we have a, 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 a an ice cream in New Zealand called Cookie Time Crunch, one of my favourites. Right in Australia, best name ever. It's called a Golden Gay Time. <laughs> best you sent me you sent me to the dairy to ever. get you a Golden Gay Time yesterday, and yeah, I was like, because, I'm not asking for that. That's because a uh, Gay Time is like, you, and we have it in New Zealand as well. It's a brand of ice cream. <laughs> Yeah, it's but the best brand. I thought Guy was setting me up like, he's going to ask for a golden gay time. He's totally going to ask for it. So next time you're over in Australia, ask for a golden gay time because can I, it is a good time. Can I drop a snack bombshell all of a sudden? Yeah. Yes. In Australia, they have Tim Tams. In yes. New Zealand, we have Tim Tams. Yep. What them. they have in Australia that we can't get in New Zealand, yep. peanut, can- peanut oh. butter Tim Tams. I'm going to get one right now. Ooh. Peanut butter Tim Tams. This snack report has been cancelled. I'm off to get some peanut butter Tim Tams. <laughs> has it been cancelled forever? Guy, Sharon and Clint on the edge. Hey guys, I'm having a new Pacific Island dance. Check it out. <laughs> Why is it to be Pacific Island dance? Just because it kind of seems Because you're racist. Like, Stop being racist. No, it seems kind it's of It's very cultural. racist. No, mate, Sharon's the only racist on this show. Yeah, Sit you're, down. Why the only can't racist you, here is you, mate. No, you're racist. You're the one that's doing a dance that just looked like you're doing a bad macarena. It was very <laughs> culturally sensitive. Thank you very much. Hey, is tomorrow it? on the show, we're going to have Ariana Grande Ariana join Grande! us. Ariana Grande! 
We recorded the interview today. She is lovely. We were quite terrified going into the interview because we'd heard otherwise, but it turned out she was great. And we'll play you that full interview tomorrow at five o'clock. Guy, Sharon, and Clint on the edge. Time for a podcast extra. Podcast extra. Podcast extra. Podcast extra. Podcast extra. Podcast extra. We're here with Jessica Gray Smith. You might know her as Denny from Home and Away. She has uh, on the show. She was denouncing um, Danny Burke, <laughs> her her hometown. You've I become too big for your boots, and you're now in Sydney, living to Vida Loca. Yeah, that's pretty much it. No, no, no. Danny Burke was uh, a great place to grow up. Hey, we're, we're not. Yeah. <laughs> We're not trying to throw you under the bus here, but um, we do want to throw you under the bus at the same time. Uh-huh. Uh, how For young aspiring actresses out there who maybe come from a place like Denny, who come from small town New Zealand, how did you do it? Um, I didn't get into acting until I was about 19, actually. Like, I didn't do it at school or anything like that. I just, um, I don't know. I started studying law and I hated it and I tried <laughs> to try, I thought of something else like, and then... I wanted to be like a professional hockey player, but that doesn't exist in New Zealand, so I didn't move well, on it, to acting. It, it does now. You become a New Zealand block, uh, uh, hockey player, and then you marry an all black, and you're sorted. That's like my friend Kayla Sharlin. She's like the captain of the girl, the women's hockey team. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, we met her. I'm a big, big fan of the New Zealand women's hockey team. They're no, one of my favourite teams. Guy was a big um, slanderer of the New Zealand women's hockey team, and we took him out there. We put him in the goal, and the girls fired balls at him nonstop. You took about 150 balls. And I, I literally wow. cried like a little girl. It was it was terrifying. I still play every weekend. Like, I've got... Oh, would you like to hit something at Guy? <laughs> I would love to. Do you, do you want to come out to the game? Um, we could set that up. You could be in goal. Like as we practice before we play the semi final. <laughs> how did good you idea? Get, my big question is: How do you end up on a show like Home and Away? Is it a tough audition process? Mm, yeah, like actually, I auditioned for Ricky and Hannah and Phoebe. So there are three other girls that you are know. On the show. You know that Ricky's a boy, eh? No, Ricky is a girl. It's a girl. Okay, yeah. sorry. Oh, I stand corrected. Gosh. I was wrong there. <laughs> I'm glad to see you're a fan of the show. <laughs> um, uh, and then I got close to them all, and then I got really close to Phoebe, maybe like down to the last two or three. Can you sing? Because you'd have to be able to sing yeah, to play yeah. Phoebe. So you had to like sing in the audition. And awesome. Stuff. I'm not going to. I've got a question <laughs> which which is going to come across extremely creepy, and I apologise in advance. Do you have to do a swimsuit element of an audition for Home and Away? Ooh. No, you don't. You don't. You just go in like, I don't know. I just went in singlet and jeans sort of thing. They actually are really cool about um, making sure you feel like the way that you are when you audition is how they expect you to be on the show. You don't have to lose any weight. You don't have to do any of oh, that. Wow. They're really like, kind of like, you know, we want a myriad of kind of shapes and stuff. They're, gen- they're generous. They don't normally get a myriad. They normally just get like skinny babes. No, but- <laughs> no actually, I think that the cast this year is someone that actually watches the show. Um <laughs> I think that the cast this year is actually quite varied and more than ever would be more no- as normal girls that would be watching the show than ever before. Yeah, but I would agree. I think so. Is it? Can I ask a question? Something I've noticed over the last like three months, there's been way more comedic kind of moments in Home and Away that have come in, especially between um, Brax and Ricky. Like they'll have these like real funny bits and all of a sudden I found myself laughing out loud mm. at Home and Away. Has there been like a, a change or have they like got new writers that are adding that in or? I think part of it, uh, I don't know if, it, I don't think there's new writers, but I think it is part of the actors kind of keeping it interesting for themselves. Like I know Alec who plays Matt, um, like Matt and Sasha, that kind of coupling. He does that too. He brings a lot of kind of humor in and so does like bonnie and 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 well i guess it's easy for him because he's acting across from his girlfriend too yeah <laughs> hey we, we've got to let you go very shortly but just quickly how do you think irene's gonna go on dancing with the stars oh i think she's gonna smash it <laughs> wait is she in dancing with the stars and ty hara oh my ty, gosh ty hara spoiler alert um for everybody listening to the show was meant to come on and talk to us but he couldn't come in because he had dance rehearsals uh, flake, total flake. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Oh, at least you know what? When uh, if home and away, if for some reason something happens, you've got dancing with the stars, and then you can come home to Shortland Street. Exactly. Oh, Jessica, you've been, <laughs> you've been so lovely. Thank you so much for coming on this podcast extra, podcast extra, podcast, podcast extra. extra. Podcast. Round of applause for Jessica, ladies and gentlemen. Well hey, done. Hey, hey. Today's Guy, Sharon and Clint podcast is brought to you by Grass. Perfect for gardens and sport. Get Grass today from your friendly Grass vendor.